there from Hebrews chapter 9, verses 11 and 12, a very familiar text to you. But when Christ appeared, now this is a contrast that the writer, the Spirit is making here. But when Christ appeared as a high priest of the good things to come, our hope, see the promises from God, what he has revealed in the earth that he is doing, what is required in his presence. The good things to come. He entered the greater and more perfect tabernacle, not made with hands, that is to say, not of this creation, and not through the blood of goats and calves, but through his own blood. He entered the holy place once for all, having obtained eternal redemption. Our brethren, the, this encapsulates the implications of, of the gospel for God, for us as well, but first it was for God. He needed one. He required one in his presence who fulfilled his will, uh, who kept his righteousness and his truth in the earth, under testing, in opposition, or through opposition, I should say, to come out on the other side, proven, faithful, stable, and anchored, and then to return to God's presence, having accomplished God's will in the earth, the things that he had made known that were necessary, the testimony in the law of Moses, in the sacrifices, in the priesthood, in the tabernacle, in the feast days, all of these things are what God had made known about what was required for his righteousness and his truth. Before he could give mercy and before he could fully reveal the hope, these that, that this, this hope that has implications in us, for us and in us, that works then in us. These good things to come. We, we have one in the presence of God, like us, who has endured, who has passed through, who, who pressed to take hold, did not let go, of the things granted him by his father. Very large things, we know, eternal things, entrusted into his hand. And he entered the earth and remained faithful, unshaken in his confidence of the promises that God had granted him. The hope that he had, that he would not decay in the grave. His body would not decay but he would come out again. The death would be swallowed up in life. Remember one place in the Lewis's story, the lion, the witch, and the wardrobe, Aslan said to the children, these things had not been tested before. Now, now we don't know. <laughs> uh, they'd certainly not been tested in the earth, had they? These things that Jesus himself endured, they'd not been tested in the, in the human experience. And Jesus tested them and found them true, showed us that they were true, that this was a certain promise. That is, it, 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 it could not be broken. It would pass the test. You could hang on to this and go completely through the fire and come out, completely through the water and come out on the other side. The good things to come. Now we've tasted of those things now. The good word of God, the Holy Spirit, the powers of the age to come. This is how this writer here, the spirit in this text, describes these things that we have. That he has brought to us. And he did this in his own life. His own blood. The text says, though we know that the life is in the blood. 
His life was offered to God, and it was accepted, approved. He gave his life to the curse, but then took it again, as the Father promised, took it back up again, and returned as a testimony and witness to those chosen witnesses that they could then go out and speak of these things and, and speak in such a way with an unshakable hope. It did not matter. You decide, Peter said, whether it is right for us to obey God or men. We cannot do that, but which we cannot speak that, but which we have seen and heard. You decide for yourself. We've decided. And they would not be shaken then from that hope. Not at all. And, of course, our brother Paul affirmed these things in his own life and writing. Having obtained eternal redemption. Now, of all these things, of course, this is what we come to the table to remember, this redemption. That is in him, not, not in our... <laughs> Not in our religious tradition, certainly not in our own imaginations, practices, customs, however you want to describe them. It's revealed from on high. Now, there are those who are ashamed of these things. There are some who don't know of them. There are others who are ashamed of them. Or, or they think that they're just some kind of a secondary thing on the list of God's revelation and so forth, and they've chosen to emphasize uh, other things that, that the scriptures may speak about, because the scripture speaks about probably everything, even if it's just a, a momentary mention. <laughs> it speaks about everything. But God has a focus and an emphasis. First of all, it's his, it's his own self. And then this great redemption enhances his name and his glory. And those of us who partake of it do as well. And so that's why we come to this table, to remember our participation in him who gave his blood and brings us the fullness, the fullness that we have for now, of these good things.